head. Thank you. Arm. Thank you. Super flat stomach. Uh, perfect. Hips. No, no. We need like hips, hips. Today, nearly every market has a digital dimension. It is safe to say, if it can't be bought online, it probably can't be bought at all. Businesses, flows of capital now exist largely in the virtual world. So in this age of technological upheaval, has prostitution gone digital? As Murphy and Potts explain, technology has become the system which we live rationalized, all-encompassing and dehumanizing. Technology is a self-running system to which humans have adapted themselves without even being aware. We are hardly aware of society's intimate relationship with technology, and even less aware of technology's profound impact on human sexuality and gender. How can we understand this intimate relationship and its implications in the digital era? The work of feminist scholar Donna Haraway may be key to helping us understand the relationship between sexuality and technology. Let us consider Haraway's cyborg metaphor. Her sensual, metallic gaze and wired eyelashes encompass a digital pulse, her lean steel torso, manicured circuit bed cuticles, and magnetic lips incite the primal technological desire for simulated secretions, virtual rendezvous, and coded indiscretions. This cyborg is not simply a wet dream of science fiction or a real creature as much as she is what Haraway suggests the lived reality of women everywhere. Haraway describes the cyborg as a cybernetic being, a hybrid of machine and human that blurs limits of nature and technology. The man-made cyborg is a metaphor for the feminine experience in an oppressive patriarchal world. But what does Haraway's cyborg theory have to do with real life? Consider the popular media site SeekingArrangement.com. Tonight, Christine is trying something different. She's going to have dinner with a man she met here on a website called SeekingArrangement.com. It's one of several sugar daddy sites where men can hook up with potential sugar babies, younger women who want to be supported financially in exchange for their companionship. Show we're providing a very valuable service that people need. Goes to show you're pulling down about 30 million a year gross. Let me tell you this straight. You are a prostitute and you are a MIT educated pimp. an oxymoron going to school to be an independent woman, but having a man pay for your services sounds a little gross. Launched in 2005, SeekingArrangement.com markets itself as a dating website for those seeking mutually beneficial arrangements. Sugar daddies and sugar babies comprise the largest demographic. The sugar baby is defined on the site as an attractive, ambitious, and goal-oriented individual, generally younger, seeking compensation for their companionship. Despite this positive terminology and the mutual benefit, the site has received criticism from popular media. While some have argued that the site is a vehicle for female empowerment and autonomy, in at least three areas the site and others like it contributes to a growing culture of subordinating women. 1. Language and images. 2. Control and power. 3. Cost and objectification. The language used by Seeking Arrangement is quite controversial and arguably deceiving. Words and phrases like mutual agreement, described on the site as two people being brutally honest with each other about who they are, what they want, and what they can offer, and two people giving as much as they take from each other, appear all over the site. The term is largely compared to prostitutes making so-called mutual arrangements with Johns, in a dynamic where the men clearly have the upper hand and where sex in exchange for financial gain is reported as mutually beneficial. Are these sugar babies truly autonomous and self-determinate, or are they remote-controlled cyborgs? But the financial transaction, she says, isn't tied to the sex. You know, they'll bring an envelope and just put it in your purse while you're not looking, or sometimes they'll just say, honey, do you need anything besides the allowance? I tell them whatever amount I need, eight, nine thousand a month. For some men, really, that's not a lot of money. Plus, a wife costs a lot more. As kinky as a cheap garden hose, Sure to rock your world, I enjoy sex as much as a teenage boy, laugh out loud. <laughs> Another one says, very discreet, married men, very safe with me. I'm flexible, likable. We can't say the next thing. These are actual quotes from your site that you can pull up today. These are but the ones using it wrong, though. 
But how wonderful is it for people to be brutally honest on a, on a dating website? You're not going to see that on a regular dating hey, listen, website. Listen, I've got no problem with them being brutally honest. I just wish you would be. I mean, a lot of these guys will just pay for pretty girls to have dinner with them. But surely you must have thought there might be an expectation of sex being involved. With some of them there is, but I also make known that that's not my expectation. But you don't exactly say sex is out of the question. Right. A lot of these girls go into these, these sugar daddies situations at 18 and 19 and, you know, maybe, you know, hopefully they don't feel obligated to, to sleep with these men, but, you know. How many of yours do you sleep with? I've slept with five? one and I've been a sugar, well, what do you call it, sugar baby since I was 18. I'm 34. I didn't even realize really what, what it meant until I Googled it. Accounts of sugar babies reflect a counter narrative to oppression. They highlight honesty money, cultural exposure, and sexual freedom. Haraway notes, unlike the hopes of Frankenstein's monster, the cyborg does not expect its father to save it through a restoration of the garden. That is, through the fabrication of a mate, it does not dream of a community on the model of organic family. The cyborg would not recognize the Garden of Eden. It is not made of mud and cannot dream of returning to dust. Like the cyborg, these sugar baby accounts do not reflect a woman seeking a mate or to return to a nature and humanity. The cyborg accepts its ambiguous state between these boundaries. Despite these cyborg and autonomous accounts, images on the website, particularly testimonials with images of young attractive women with older men, insinuate notions of gendered power relations. Do the terms sugar daddy and sugar baby insinuate pedophilia or the extreme childlike dependence of women? Or is the language simply harmless website slang? Haraway reiterates this saying, communications technologies and biotechnologies enforce new social relations for women worldwide. Technologies and scientific discourses can also be reviewed as instruments for enforcing meanings. Technological discourses and technologies like seeking arrangement reinforce invisible systems of meaning largely constructed by those men in power. It's just that in a way it's like a father-daughter relationship. Are you attracted to her? Absolutely. Okay, do you understand how that in the same paragraph as it's a father-daughter relationship and then you're attracted to her t sounds a little gross? Well, that's why I said there are aspects to it. I'm not. asking, if they, if they abuse one of these girls physically or rape them, or take advantage of them, or knowingly give them an STD, then you'll be accountable for that? Would a bar be accountable for two people that meet? There? Well, if any charge that's truth about me being a pimp, I would say I'm a pimp of brutal honesty. You will find that a lot of members are very honest about what they want and also about the issues that they have. You don't find that on Match.com. People beat around the bush. So with everyone ranting about autonomy and sexual freedom, who is really in control? Is it Wade? or the sugar daddies or the sugar babies. This virtual community perpetuates norms of the masculine hegemony. At those guys at Harvard across the river and you're like, wow, you know, they, they're dating all the hot chicks and maybe someday I'll use technology to, to you know, as, as an advantage. Seeking arrangement creates a virtual reality catered to men's desires for the commodity of women. Wade is not selling mutually beneficial relationships. He is selling sexually accessible relationships with indefinite boundaries. Much like Donna Haraway's Informatics of Domination, which she defines as the actual situation of women, their integration and exploitation in a world system of production and reproduction and communication, this technology is an expansion of gender oppression. For seeking arrangement, the targets are single mothers in debt and female college students struggling with loan. The problem is not the endorsement of sexual freedom the site allows. It is the site's ability to socialize women into a cult of hyper-femininity and subordinate roles for profit. Images of gorgeous women represent the controlling discourse of femininity in real life. Feminist scholar Sandra Bartke writes, In the regime, woman must make herself object and pray for man. Profile pictures of sugar babies are often consistent with Bartke's description. Eyes are limpid pools, this cheek baby smooth, they stand perpetually before his gaze and under his judgment. Feminine aesthetic mandated by seeking arrangement is fragile, innocent, and one that offers little resistance, ultimately inferior. Okay, so you got about 90,000 sugar daddies? That's correct. We actually let the girls use it for free. Okay. And the sugar daddies pay about $50 a month. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you've got 90,000 sugar daddies on there paying $50 a month, mm -hmm. you're grossing four or five million a month? 
Well, certainly not everyone is active at the same time, but we, we do turn a profit. Okay, let's say Seeking arrangement is critiqued for its cost structure, representing a digital brothel where sugar daddies play to pay. Sugar babies use the site for free, while Wade makes millions monthly. But don't all dating sites promise love or relationships for money? You pay them a fee to narrow down digital profiles, finding you the partner of your dreams. Women are reduced to search engine parameters. 5 foot 7 body type, slim, blue eyes, red hair. They become profile pictures and appealing personal quotes. Sugar babies are cyborgs dispersed through search engines, images of their body, their thoughts, and text behind the computer screen. Maybe she is the ultimate cyborg, willing to utilize the power of her sexuality to achieve the financial means she believes will propel her social status and lifestyle. Though patriarchal and capitalistic meanings may invisibly structure our lives through powerful modern technologies, the cyborg is a sensual woman that evades these boundaries and encapsulates a cold and steely beauty that allures with its almost human touch. By enacting autonomous accounts, do these cyborg sugar babies escape the inequities of their own programming, or do they accept it by promoting a technological system of patriarchal privilege? Do they create power by changing the language they use to reflect their autonomy? Social, ethnic, and racial movements have done the same, embracing negative terms and empowering these with positive connotations. In her sugar and steel glazed frame, the luscious curves and dark eyes, does the cyborg dream of a time where the digital market is growing a consciousness? Does she awaken to a simulation of courtship or see beyond the buzzing metropolis of commerce towards her infinite possibilities? Hey!